when you are impressed by somebody it could be somebody's looks somebody's work somebody's way of speaking somebody's way of walking somebody's way of doing things somebody's way of dressing up in a certain way and you become impressed with any of these element when you become impressed with any of these element you start to follow that person it's the most uh, cheapest thing cheapest in terms of economic value <laughs> there's no cost involved there yeah it's at the bottom level then out of some followers remember we're talking in context of guru out of some followers in some people for some reason a reverence wakes up reverence towards that person wakes up when the reverence arises these followers become devotees but it's still a relationship from the far i am somebody's devotee because there is definitely a reverence actually there are two things there is a i am impressed by that person and then there is reverence also i become a devotee but i'm still not doing anything i'm just listening to this person i'm just watching this person i'm just reading about this person but i'm not doing anything i'm a devotee still i have not put my skin in the game i'm still a little far i'm still in the safe zone as to say or i'm still in the comfort zone when i'm a devotee then somehow out of the devotees some people graduate they have a very strong will to know the truth usually they have very strong intensity of, of their being they want to put their skin in the game they want to just put everything that they have in the process they don't want to hold back anything so out of some devotees some people who are very intense who are very focused for their sadhana they grow up and transcend to become disciples in hindi we call them shishyas remember the story i shared with you the sapt rishi is the seven great rishis of india they were praying to their guru for hundreds of years the guru was just not even looking at them then one fine day the compassion arose and the guru adi guru accepted them as his disciples it's a rare thing disciplehood is a rare thing and without disciplehood journey is impossible so what is happening now in the disciple there is impression yes the disciple is impressed by adi guru for sure number 2 yes the disciple also has the quality of a devotee which means there is a reverence the disciple has for adi guru but then he is also build the third quality there is a deep surrender in the disciple towards the guru and this surrender is of a different level altogether now the relationship between the guru and the shishya guru and the disciple now the relationship becomes very intimate it's the intimacy of this relationship which does the magic it's not the content it's also not the closeness to the guru you could be living with the guru and you could still not be a disciple so everybody who lives with a guru is not necessarily a disciple 
they could be devotees they could be followers but unless this transition happens from a follower to a devotee from a devotee to a disciple the real spiritual sadhana or journey does not happen it's only at this point when the journey really starts before that it's all pre work before that it's all cleaning up you're clearing up the system so to say you're preparing the soil before that you're preparing the soil but only when the relationship enters into this space the seeding happens and the journey takes off from there you must all think about it where are you are you a follower are you a devotee or are you a disciple has your guru accepted you as a disciple because follower and devotee is a one way relationship but disciplehood is a two way relationship the guru must also accept you as a disciple it's a two way relationship and when that happens the magic starts to happen not before that i have seen thousands of cases and this formula fits in perfectly well this is exactly how it happened i used to think earlier i have been with some great masters and i used to think earlier there are hundreds and thousands of people around them why don't i see a spark in the people around why don't i see a transformation in the people around what is the missing point they live with the guru practically huge ashrams they live with the guru in the ashrams but why still in their eyes satya moksha ananda is not there and then later on i realized these are the steps this is how it works you could live in an ashram you could live with a guru for thousands of years but unless you've graduated apart from the being impressed apart from having reference reverence unless this deep surrender arises journey does not take off i'm sharing this with you based on my own life's experience i don't know if this is mentioned in any book i don't know i've not studied i've experienced sadhana and journey like this you miss this you miss this life nothing happens only this will become little more fatter loaded with lot of content yeah but that's no guarantee of any transformation how we together on this wonderful and it take it's a massive jump to actually become a disciple have you heard about a a great being in india called sai baba sai baba the great sai baba yeah of shirdi do you know how many disciples he had hello make a guess how many disciples sai baba of shirdi had in lakhs in lakhs anybody else 12 <laughs> why 12 12 right no not 12 make a guess anybody else one million a million maybe no you'll be shocked to know this sai baba of shirdi just had one disciple just one disciple no he was still in the body no. yeah in fact disciple left before him 
and it is said that in his entire life <coughs> sai baba just cried once when this disciple died in front of sai baba and devotees asked and followers were in millions devotees were in thousands disciple one so all the followers and the devotees asked sir you such a great being you are an avatar you are crying and sai baba shed three tears just three tears only three tear three tears in his entire life so followers and devotees asked sir number one we are confused you cried you are an avatar number two we are confused who shed just three tears if you sad then you you know you cry a lot why three teen aansu hi kyun sirf sai baba said that this person had just given his life for me he was so surrendered that even if i asked him to go and jump from that hill he'll not even think twice forget about questioning he'll just go walk and jump he was in too much of love with sai baba he said but when he left the body three strong karmas were still left if those karmas are not gone he will be born again i don't want that to happen i'm his guru this much i can do so with each tear one pending karma was out and the disciple attained perfect nirvana now this kind of thing happens rarely only with the disciples only with the disciples so you don't have to pay any cost to become a follower nothing you don't have to pay any cost even to become a devotee one way traffic but disciple your life is online if you really willing to die not in in body of course that will happen to all of us but die in your ego only then you could become a disciple and only then the journey could progress otherwise it's all circles and it's all circus oh that's a rhyme no <laughs> otherwise it's all circle and it's all circus nothing is really happening i want you to think about it deeply don't take spiritual life and the opportunity that you have got in this life don't take it lightly why do i say this i have traveled across the world a lot and i have met some great sadhaks across the globe most of them would cry deeply whenever they are on the airport to see me off and i ask them why why are you crying they're not crying for me they crying crying for this land they always felt that somehow if we can come to india which is the land of truth moksha spirituality nirvana something could shift in them <laughs>